to learn to stand firm. We need to know it now. We need to prepare them. We need to prepare our children and our grandchildren and our friends and our neighbors now. Once below it, it's too late. Once that sky cracks and Christ comes, it's over. And there'll be no more time. And God's given us a warning. And I, I really today want to give you that warning. Pay attention to wake up and to, to realize now is the time to be ready, to prepare, so that when Christ comes, we will be ready, us and our children and our grandchildren and those that we love. Uh, speaking of the change, the, the Boswells, um, they have set up a, a fund for um, Joe at, at Enterprise or Eagle Bank, it's Enterprise now, um, and if you would like to donate to help with his, you can either go to the Eagle Bank over here or the Enterprise Bank and make a, a deposit in the banks, or you can mail in a check to the Joe Steinfeld, S-T-I-N-F-E-L-D, just like I'm on TV, Steinfeld uh, uh, Benefit. And uh, anything that you would like to give would be great. appreciated. We will be sending an email out in the morning with that information on it for you if you'd like to donate. But it's been on my heart this week. I almost canceled the regular sermon to talk, just talk about that. But uh, so now you get your first sermon. Now we're going to give you the second one. All right? Text for the day is from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in the severest test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We've been talking... We've been talking about uh, this. Don't risk it. That was it. Um, stewardship and living out our faith. It was neat this this morning. Um, Debbie Clean came in, and uh, you remember that uh, four weeks ago I gave out little gift tags um, and to remind you to put on different places in your house or wherever. To remind you that. Everything you have, everything you see, everything you touch is a gift from God. And, and that gift tag is there to remind us that this is a gift from God. And she put one in her house to remind her, and, and I like this one, she put one in her mirror to remind her when she looked in the mirror in the morning that she was a gift from God too. Um, which I pretty good. But she couldn't think of it's the third one. And the, she was mowing her grass this last week, and she just got no lot of orange. She was mowing her grass, and every time she went up, she saw her neighbor. Uh, Cag order from her, had gotten his grass on his knee high, had broken his knee, I guess. Um, and finally, on one trip, she just said, The heck with it, she drove across the road, the road and, and cut his grass too. And then she understood what we've been talking about. Everything we have is a gift from God to be used for God. Everything can be used. Because God never gives us anything that we can use to his glory. Today we're going to talk about uh, giving, but what it means to give, and the grace of giving. We've got two little quotes that I just like a lot, that I just wanted to give you the really kind of precursor sermon. I love this one from Martin Luther. It says, there are three conversions necessary for the Christian life. The conversion of the heart, the mind, and the pocketbook. And uh, that's so often true in too many lives. And then all giving is a gift from God to God. Whatever we give is a gift from God to God. Let's begin to pray. Lord, we ask you to open our hearts to you this day. That we may just take hold of you. 
may live in your love and your grace, and that we may walk with you each and every day. Lord, fill us this day with, with a heart full of giving, a heart full of joy, a heart full of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we are literally going to walk verse by verse through that this lesson that was read to you. So if you want to follow along, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 through 5. Um, and you can look at your Bible and just kind of follow along with me. It'll be up here also. Because Paul is going to talk about the fact that giving is grace. Giving is grace. It's God's grace at one of its most neatest faults. And so we need to understand that too often we give because of obligation or we give to God or the church because we think we have to. Or we feel compelled or that we're told we got to do it. But the reality is giving is grace. It's God's grace. And that's what we first learn in our text. Grace, it's grace because it flows from God. I want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian church. The ability to give for all of us is the gift from God. The ability, the desire to give. And I'm not just talking about your money to the church. I'm talking about all the giving. Whether it's giving to the charities, whether it's giving our time, whether it's giving our abilities. Whatever it is that we give to for God, it's a gift from God. It gives us that ability to do it. A fascinating study happened in 2007 where they found out that people who attend church, outside of what they give to church, okay, not counting that, give four times more to other charities as a percentage of income than any other group. They give four times more outside of what they give to the church. Think about that. That outgives every other group. Why? Because giving, desire to give, to share, to touch others, is a gift from God. It always begins with God's grace for us and God's love for us. That's what Paul writes literally in Romans, that giving is a gift. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If you're given to prophesy, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encouraged, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. We are to give freely and joyfully. It's a gift from God. And when you give, you are just acknowledging that it's a gift from God. Second thing we learn from our text today, it's grace because giving never comes from abundance. Our text says, in the midst of very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. I read a book, Sydney and I were reading it, I can't remember the book or the TV show, I had some book, I think. But anyway, um, about Mother Teresa, autobiography or something. And one of the things we was talking about was when she was out of Calcutta. When she was amazed that people, when they would take like a bag of rice to a family, you know, now these people have nothing. Remember, we're talking really dirt poor. Had nothing. These people would take out what they needed for that night, and then they would take their bag, what's left over, and give it to their neighbor. And their neighbor would take out what they needed, and they'd give it to another neighbor. And she was just amazed at this, that they would, they would care about someone else. Now, think about this. You guys, you have a rough time, you're broke, you don't have any groceries, you don't have anything else, somebody drops a bag of groceries off of your house. How many of us would say, okay, well, I'll take out what I need for tonight, and I'm going to give it to somebody else who needs it? I wouldn't do that. We'd say, ha-ha, I never get groceries, that'll last me for a week, good! They literally would take enough for their meal, and then give it away to somebody. They understood giving better than most of us ever would. You know what's fascinating? Again, they just studied 2011, just one, 
He's actually on Java Stasa. Um, of course, the people who are under the poverty line in America, just in America, give three times as much per their income, as a percentage of their income, than the rich do. All the Bill Gates and everybody else, the poor, as a percentage of their income, gives three times as much as the rich do. That was just amazing to me. But you know what was even more amazing? Do you know what the worst giving group is socioeconomically? The middle class. Us. Most of us are middle class. Maybe lower middle class or upper middle class. We're that middle class thing. The poor give 3% or greater of their income. The rich give 1%, and the middle class give less than 1% of their income away as a group. That covers all charitable giving. Churches, whatever. That's pretty pathetic. I did not expect that. I really didn't. You see, giving doesn't come from abundance. It doesn't come because I have so much I give it away. It becomes because God has put his grace in my heart. Years ago, we were planning to pay the parking lot. We were trying to raise money for that. And of course, that took us several years to raise money for the parking lot. It was like $20,000 at that time. Um, and we, we struggled for it, we struggled for it, and one member came up to me, and it was one of those times when the lottery was real big, and they said, Pastor, if I win the lottery, I'll pay the whole parking lot. And I didn't say to him, I said that's nice, but I didn't say to him, my thought was not even wrong. And I would have loved them away because they wouldn't have got it. You know why? Because we're not faithful and living. You never be faithful and living. That's what scripture says. Whoever can be trusted with little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with little will also be dishonest with much. So how have you not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth? Who will trust you with true riches? The reality is that we're not faithful in our giving and our serving God with what we have now. You have to be faithful when you get tons of money. Because giving never comes from abundance. It never comes from abundance. Nobody ever gives because they have too much. We give because of the grace of God. Number three. It's grace because giving is never coerced. Second Corinthians, our third verse in our text says, For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. Paul says, nobody forced them to do it. It's like, you know, in the book of uh, Exodus, where it talks about the people bringing in stuff for the temple to build the Ark of Covenant. And it says, literally, they finally had to tell them to stop bringing stuff in. They had to, I mean, that, that's every pastor's dream. Okay, you've given enough, don't give any more. Um, but the reality is, is that they, they, they literally give it so much. And Paul's going, you know, because giving, you're giving God cannot be coerced by anything. I have heard so many times people say, well, that's all churches do is talk about money and how you need to give the money. I've seen, heard people tell me that they've been to churches where pastors held up a bill and yelled at them, we can't pay this bill because you haven't done this or that. I've heard of churches that require you to, to uh, sign a pledge every year of how much money you're going to give. And if they keep track. And if you don't give the, the amount of money you say you're going to give, they call you and tell you you're going to get on the stick. I know churches literally that will tell you that, you know, that, that giving X amount of dollars is a prerequisite for becoming a member. You can't shame people, you can't guilt people in the, to, to giving. God never does that. And that doesn't require and you to, to say, I've got to do this. God's not going to force you to, to give X number of dollars. Now, do we expect you to tithe? Yes. Why? Because that's God's word. And we tell you that from get go. You know, you'll learn that in class, all right? We expect you to tell that. All right? Do we ever pay attention to whether you do or not? No. <laughs> we don't look at it and say, okay, well, you know, I might make so much money and only giving this much. No. 
In fact, in, in all the years I've been pastor, 30 some years, I've only probably a handful of times, less than, less than five times, that I ever dealt with anybody because of money. And in every case, it's been someone who's been giving on a regular basis and totally stops. And I go out there because I know that there's a problem. When you give regularly, you suddenly stop giving totally, that means there's a problem. It may be you're mad at somebody, it may be you had a financial setback, it may be that you're hurting in other ways. And every single person I've ever gone out and done that with has appreciated me. Coming down. So they don't go out there and say, you're not giving enough. Giving is not coerced. God doesn't want your money. You get nothing in your heart. Do you understand that? Uh, if you're not giving to God out of your heart, out of your love for Jesus and thanks for what he has given and done for you, then don't give. God does not want your money if he does not have your heart. If you're not, if you're not giving to God and you're offering because of your thanks for Jesus, don't give, please. Because God doesn't want it. And we don't want it. Look at what he says to the people of Israel in Isaiah. Now I love this one because it's he calls them Zod and Gomorrah. If you know Bible, that's about the worst thing you call. Those are dirty fighting words, you know? But he calls them Sodom and Gomorrah. Hear, O oh, the word of the Lord, O oh, you rulers of Sodom. Now, this is Israel. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. Your multitude of sacrifices. What are they to me, said the Lord? I have had more than enough of your burnt offering, and ram, and fat, and cast. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me in my court, who asked you to do this? Who asked you to trample on my court? Stop bringing me your meaningless offerings. Your intent is detestable to me. Your new moon, your Sabbaths, your convocations. I cannot bear your worthless assembly. No. Wash yourself and make yourself clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your skins are like scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like Let me tell the people, don't bother. Don't bother. Because I don't want you to ever feel that you have to give to God. Because God doesn't need it. That's true to be his price, because God really doesn't need it. God calls us to give to God. In fact, literally, our text tells us it's a privilege. It's grace because it's a privilege. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. They urgently pleaded that we would they have the privilege to share. You know what they do in Mozambique when they do their offering? They dance. It's supposed to be music for that word. They get turned up. It 
made us clean, and we are clean and pure, as the book of Hebrews tells us. They dance because they have that joy. They understand the joy of the Lord that no matter what happens today, no matter whether I'm going or where, whatever happens, it doesn't matter. Because I got the joy of knowing God loves me, and God is watching over me, and God cares for me. They dance because it's a privilege to give to God. And it is. It's a privilege for us to be able to give to God. Because again, God doesn't need it. It's not what we give. It's a privilege because we are able to say thank you to God. Our giving is in our way saying thank you to, to, to God for what he's done. Because it's God who died for us. It's God who loves us. He didn't die for your money. I didn't die for your possessions. He died for you. He died for you in your life. The blood that was shed was for you. And we woke up this morning. And you woke up in a bed. And I would guess that most of us woke up in a pretty nice in bed. You didn't like wake up in a cot. You didn't wake up on the floor. Unless you fell out of bed like Ron did from what I was saying. <laughs> We woke up with a nice and, and you went in to your, your refrigerator this morning, and you opened the refrigerator, and there was food in it. All kinds of stuff in it. And then you got in a vehicle, a car, some guy, and got here. Did you realize that's all kiss to God? From God to you? They're God's kiss to you. Everything that you've seen and touched today is God's gift to you. And how we give and use what God's given us is our way of saying thank you. It's, second of all, it's because a privilege because we're part of eternal work. It has always amazed me that God in his ability, his wisdom, his power has chosen to make you and me part of the eternal salvation for all mankind. You and I are part of God's plan to get it done. After Christ rose from the dead, he could have said, Angel, converted everybody, boom. But he didn't. He chose us to spread the news. He chose us to touch the world. He chose us to tell people of Christ. Now, if I was picking people for a team, I wouldn't pick me. If I was picking people to be a part of what God's plan for eternal salvation, I wouldn't pick me. And if you were honest, you wouldn't pick you. But that's exactly what God did. When you received my faith, when, you, when the waters of baptism covered you, because I fear you're here, God showed you. Be part of eternal plan. So that means that literally, on the last day when we're standing in John and Revelation, talks about the multitude, the millions of people standing there in front of God, millions upon millions of, of people of every race and nation and tribe. And some of them are there because of what we do here today. Because of what you do here today. And we give ourselves, and we give our money, and we give our gifts. Because that's what God has chosen, to make you and me a part of that. What a wonderful thing. We are part of God's eternal plan. He lets us play a part in it. We give because it's a way of showing our love in a visible way. You know, sometimes I look at my wife or I look at my kids and I just wish there was some way that I could really make them see my heart and really see just how much I love them. You know, and sometimes you just, you just know they don't get it. That you, that you love them so much, and they don't understand it. They don't truly know how much you love them. And you don't know any way of doing it. You want to just shake them. That doesn't help, by the way. But you just want to shake them. Or you hug the stuffings out of them. 
And, and yet, you want to find some way for them to understand just the love that's in your life for them. Well, that's what giving is. It's one way we visibly show that God's love's in us and that we love them. And finally, it's a, it's, it's a privilege because it gives us a chance to demonstrate obedience. And this is a way of demonstrating obedience. When we tithe, it's demonstrating obedience to God's command. It's saying, look, Lord, here I am. I'm going to be obedient to you. And that's a neat thing. A neat way to do it is to be able to say, look, Lord, I understand. I'm part of your family. Yes, I'm here. I want to serve you. Number five, it's grace because giving only comes after faith. And they exceeded our expectation. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. They exceeded expectation because they gave themselves first to the Lord. That God, this is called God, to give ourselves first to Him. And then our gifts. You know, my favorite part of serving today. I wish I was a Baptist today. You know, it would be a good Baptist day because I have an altar call right now. I just love to have that. Because, you know, I know most of you, but I don't know in your heart. I don't know why you're really here today. Maybe you're here because you feel obligated. You have to be. Maybe you're here because you feel that, that this is the only way that God's going to bless you. Maybe you're here just for no other reasons because you think that you want people to see you here. I don't know what the reason is. But, but God tells you this. To come and give yourself to Him first. And I'll tell you right now, if, you, if you've never given yourself to Him, then don't even put your money in the offering plate today. God don't want it. I think it is. Really think about giving yourself to Him. Say, here I am. I'm going to give you my heart and my life. I'm going to give you all that I have because you've given all you have for me and you've worked in my heart to do that. Because until we do that, no giving, no serving, no doing matters. Because he who came to die for you, died for you. When you give yourself to him first, then you understand what it means to give it beyond. Amen. And now may the peace of God who passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from this day forward to life everlasting. Amen.